If you see my earlier video on simulation theory, you'll know that I am all but convinced that we do indeed exist in a virtual construct of some sort. I don't like to use the word simulation though. People equate that with fake, and there is nothing fake about the experience we are having. But is that the case for everyone, or everything? I don't think so. Let's talk about non-player characters, or NPCs. Many simulation theory proponents liken this reality to a video game. Thomas Campbell, a physicist who has built an entire theory around the simulation hypothesis and who is currently conducting experiments in an attempt to prove his theory, believes just that. We exist in a video game like virtual construct. For this discussion, let's assume he's right. As players in this game, our consciousness inhabits avatars, our seemingly flesh and bone bodies, to navigate all the joys and sorrows that come as standard to the game. We navigate the game with a sense of free will, bound by the rules, but able to interact with the world at will. That's how players are described, but what kind of behaviors would an NPC exhibit in this game? Before we get into that, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm actively growing this channel and my intent is to contribute new content on a regular basis, and I'd love for you to be part of the conversation. Moving on. There are three characteristics that stand out to me that defines non-player characters. First. NPCs conduct themselves in a predictable manner. In video games, Super Mario Bros. for example, Mario is able to survive each level because his adversaries, the NPCs, behave in a manner that's highly predictable. Secondly, there's not a lot of variety in how NPCs present themselves. They often appear rather stereotypical, fitting a specific mold. And finally, they have a very narrow purpose. They tend to complete a handful of tasks at most, and do not behave outside of a set number of parameters. Consider this. Non-player characters are essential to any computer game, and they outnumber actual players considerably. For instance, take the classic Super Mario Bros. game for example. There are two actual players of the game, Mario and Luigi, avatars that our consciousness takes control of to navigate each level. Every single other character the brothers run into are created by the simulation, placed there to play one of two roles. They exist to challenge the brothers, or they exist to assist the brothers. With a little thought, we can easily apply this model to our lives. There are characters in our lives that are there to assist, and there are many that are there to throw obstacles in our path. If this reality is indeed a video game like simulation, then it would be reasonable to assume that there are NPCs, but the number of NPCs would be contingent on the type of game we are playing. If this reality is a game akin to Mario Bros., we can assume most, if not all, characters are NPCs. That would mean everybody in your life is a construct of the simulation. This idea is unnerving for many. It would mean all your loved ones, your best friend in high school, that random stranger on the bus who is sitting in your favorite seat, are all simply constructs. Unconscious, hollow shells. I don't believe this is the case though. I think the game we are playing is closer to an MMORPG, or a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Something like World of Warcraft. But I don't think the game is designed in a way to allow players to discern which characters are players and which are NPCs. I think this is an important aspect of the simulation. As players, if we are able to figure out which characters are NPCs and which are not, the experience would be ruined completely. Interacting with an NPC would be like interacting with a technology like OpenAI's GPT-3 text generator. Convincing, but we know we are interacting with a soulless machine. What role does consciousness play? Consciousness is a defining characteristic of a player, and the lack of consciousness is the defining characteristic of an NPC. An NPC does not have an inner monologue, or an inner experience. How do you know you're not an NPC? You can thank a philosopher from the 1600s, René Descartes, for coming up with a litmus test for consciousness. His words, I think, therefore I am. An NPC has no need to think. Their behavior is set in stone and programmed. They move through this life literally without a thought in their heads. Their behavior, though, is coded in a way that makes an NPC indiscernible from a real player. If asked, an NPC will tell you they have an inner monologue, but they are simply programmed to state as such. NPCs present as just as rich and complex as real players. It's what makes the game realistic. Since there is no way to know for certain which entities you run into are avatars that are inhabited by a consciousness, and which are NPCs, we must conduct ourselves in a manner that assumes everyone we run into is a full-fledged player, and this very well may be the case. Every human being we run into may very well be a player, however NPCs would still outnumber players by a considerable amount. 
Another class of NPCs we can define are entities that add variety to our reality. This class may very well represent the majority of NPCs we see and interact with. These can be birds singing in the tree outside your window, the fish on the end of your fishing line, or a chimpanzee staring at you with indifference from its habitat at the zoo. Yes, your beloved pet may very well be an NPC. If you've ever seen the television series Westworld, you know what I'm getting at. Not only did the creators of Westworld create humanoid androids, NPCs, that are practically indiscernible from real people, but they also created wildlife, birds that fly, and horses to ride on. Now if this wasn't already weird, it's about to get weirder. There is another class of NPC that needs to be mentioned. There is a theory that extraterrestrial life, despite their obvious technological superiority, are jealous of humans. Why? Because humans have a soul. Extraterrestrials may very well be self-aware NPCs. This theory makes some sense. What could an intelligence that has mastered intergalactic travel possibly want from us? What could we possibly bring to the table? This is assuming that the objects we see buzzing around our skies for the past several hundred years are indeed aliens. As consciousnesses, piloting digital avatars with an origin outside the simulation, an alien species that was trapped in the simulation may see humans as a possible bridge or portal out of this digital construct. They have mastered the simulation and now want what humans have, an existence outside of it. Perhaps there are intelligences constructed by the simulation that desire more. Digital constructs that have discerned their role in the matrix and are not satisfied with the limitations placed upon them. In closing, Practically every game has NPCs, and if you don't think this is a game, consider the following. Just consider the context we are living in right now. We live on a planet that's biosphere is at risk of collapsing. There's a rampaging viral infection sweeping across the globe, killing hundreds of thousands of us. Our mainstream media are openly acknowledging a phenomena, UFOs, that's existence many attribute to the existence of extraterrestrial intelligences. Our planet is rocked by extraordinary events on a daily basis. In addition to this, we are told that we exist on a tiny speck of matter hurtling through a possibly infinite cosmos at staggering speeds, all born from a singularity that burst into existence over 14 billion years ago. Sounds like an exciting game to me. Thank you for listening. If you like my work, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And remember, this game is not without risk. Be careful out there, and take care.